Hey guys, Firum here, and today I am proud to present my first ever Asphalt 9 multiplayer video. Today I will be reviewing and showing the Dodge Challenger SRT8 in multiplayer. So my Challenger is at 2 out of 3 stars, with 8 on top speed, 8 on acceleration, 8 on handling, and 8 on nitro, as well as having an import part on acceleration and handling. So in our first race, we face a 1501 Mercedes AMG as well as a 1315 Dodge Challenger SRT8. And speaking of the Challenger, we meet Dr. Hallusion and his later in this video. Starting out, I usually do not use nitro right away so that I don't get 360. Now here I was able to catch up to somebody, so I 360'd him instead, because this car does have quite decent acceleration, and not much in multiplayer that I faced actually starts up faster than it does. Unfortunately, its handling and drifting are quite bad, causing me to wreck into the middle there when I was trying to take this route. But do not worry, not all hope is lost. I believe this car is the most overpowered car you will get in Asphalt 9 for quite a while. It is capable of reaching 1500 plus rating in multiplayer, and I was able to reach Platinum League with this car at only one star. So yes, an extremely good car and a must have for anybody doing multiplayer in Asphalt 9. So here this guy is about to pass me, so I 360 him and knock him down. That is a good tactic to use in this game. If somebody is faster than you and is passing you and you cannot really do much of anything about it, 360 when they're right next to you and oftentimes you can knock them down. Now you have to be a little bit careful. 360s can backfire and just cause you to lose speed, but if you're careful with them, they can help you quite a bit. As promised, I will be making an Asphalt 9 tips and tricks advice kind of video to help you guys out who are just beginning the game. However, I will still be telling you guys some information in this video as well. So the main thing most people probably already know already is pretty much always spam nitro when you're in midair. Whether you go up a flat spin or a barrel roll, it greatly increases your speed in the air. So in this race, we beat Elite Predator in his Challenger as well as Takusui, I think, in the Mercedes. In this next race, we face three other challengers that are all at approximately the same rank as me, so this should make for quite an interesting race. Now, this is on the track Rome. When I first started playing Asphalt 9 not too long ago, Rome was one of my least favorite tracks because it was so confusing. Because, for example, at some parts there's ramps going every which way and you could very easily fall into the river if you do not know where the road is. So yeah, I tried to stay away from Rome for a while. However, I got to learn it pretty well. It's actually best to go up that barrel back there and drop down into the middle down there. However, when I recorded this a couple days ago, I did not know that at the time. However, I still did drop down into this section, which is good. Unfortunately, I fell into the river, which is not good, as you might be able to imagine. Thankfully, this did not cost me the race, as you will see. I spam nitro in midair, and with such a high speed boost, I'm able to catch up pretty close to the guys in first, second, and third, passing the third guy, and almost catching the first and second place guys. I would say two of the biggest factors in Asphalt 9 are nitro management, and knowing when to use different kinds of nitro. For example, it is good to use the single tap yellow nitro when you are just on a long straightaway or whatever and you don't really need to get up speed quickly. However, it is best to triple tap and use this orange nitro whenever you go up into the air, then brake when you're in midair and use the yellow nitro when you land. This will allow your nitro to last longer and you will not lose any speed because of it. Shockwave's main use is getting up to speed around a sharp turn. However, I will elaborate more on all of these in my tips and tricks video. I just want to give you guys something in this video that you can learn from, hopefully. So we managed to beat these three other challengers, even with falling into the river. So here we are facing a 1497 Porsche 911 on Shanghai, which is probably one of the coolest looking tracks in the entire series of asphalt. So the reason I used Nitro at the beginning of this race, even though I didn't on the other races, is because I was in front and I did not want to get knocked down by the person behind me who may or may not use nitro at first. If they did, there's a good chance that I would get knocked down. So yes, generally what I've found in this game, it is best to use nitro if you're in the front for that reason, and if you're in the back, do not use nitro right away and let the people in front battle it out and then you can pass them later. 
I nearly knocked that guy down with my 360, but I didn't, so I decided to try it again, and this time it succeeded. You really have to be right next to them when you do the 360, or all that will happen is you'll lose speed and they'll get ahead. Trust me, that has happened many times. You have to do it precisely for it to work properly. And that is why, unlike a lot of other people, I'm not entirely against 360s in multiplayer, because there is a pretty high degree of risk involved with them. You will see me use Perfect Nitro occasionally, however, it is generally best to not use it at all, because because it basically drains the nitro very quickly and does not really end you up at any higher speed than the single tap nitro would, which lasts longer. Nitro in this game is primarily used to get you up to your top speed rather than going beyond it, which it can do of course, but that's not its primary purpose in this game. So the reason I am drifting a lot here is so that I can shockwave out of it and get back up to my top speed. Again, that's the best use of shockwave. And that is where drifting around turns is probably the most useful when you know you can shockwave out of them. If there are just curves or whatever, it is usually just best to turn around them, especially with cars that do not drift very well, such as this one. And especially if you still have a bit of nitro to get out of the turn. In this race, we beat a higher 911. You will notice throughout this video that the Challenger does quite well against cars at higher ranks than itself. It can generally beat other cars like 200 or so rank above it without much of a problem. However, when the other cars get like 3 to 400 ranks above it, that's when it becomes a little bit harder to beat them. But it is still possible, just quite difficult. And for anybody who is wondering, which a lot of you probably are, I did not multiplayer tune this car because matchmaking in Asphalt 9 is based not on the car's rank, but on the player's rating. This means that in multiplayer, you will most likely get faced with people around your same skill level, whether or not they have around the same car as you. So that is why it is best in this game to just try to upgrade your cars as much as you can, rather than just upgrading top speed or whatever. And this is especially important because, well, the cars really do not accelerate or handle well at all. So that makes it doubly important to upgrade those as well. Unfortunately, this new system of multiplayer means that if you are using a low ranked car and you're in a higher league, you will most likely face cars hundreds of ranks above you that you cannot beat. Dr. Hallusion was actually able to reach Legends League, yes, 1600 rating in a 1300 plus challenger, much like the one I am using right now. So it is definitely possible to do so, but quite difficult because, well, a lot of players have higher cars. And I would say that as people play the game more and more, it will become harder and harder to reach Legends League with low cars. So in this race, we beat that nearly 1500 911, as well as almost beating Phoenix Run in his Challenger. Keep an eye out for him in a future race in this video. So here we are facing a slightly higher Challenger, as well as a 1788 911. Yes, that is nearly 500 ranks above us. You see what I'm saying about um, the higher ranked cars. So we are playing again on San Francisco. San Francisco, I believe, is actually my favorite track in Asphalt 8 and probably the track that I know the best. Of course, that doesn't mean I don't make mistakes on it. It's just that I feel more comfortable on it than any other track. And somehow I landed smack dab on top of a trolley and thus got put down to like zero miles per hour almost. However, this race is not over yet. If you're in last, don't despair because there is still a possibility that you will catch up. Basically what I've found, finish the race if you're in the top half and if you are two out of three, that's when you should finish also. If you know you're going to come in last or very near last, then it might be a good idea to leave. However, some people have been having problems with losing lots of points when they leave. Now, this is a little bit odd because sometimes you lose points when you leave and sometimes you don't. And I have yet to figure out when you do and when you don't. I will let you guys know if I figure that out, but so far, I'm not sure if anyone has. However, that would be very nice to know for future reference. So we are slightly catching up to this challenger up here, and I knew that if I could 360 him, I could probably manage to beat him. So I shockwaved up to him and then did the 360 and knocked him down. You see guys, when used effectively, they can be great tools in multiplayer. In his case, he did the wise thing and disconnected, because there is at least a chance that he won't lose any points, rather than being guaranteed going down like 20 if he finishes. So that 1700-something 911 beat us, but we did beat that other challenger. When somebody disconnects, it always shows that they lose points. However, that is oftentimes just the points that they would lose if they had not disconnected. In this race, we are facing a 1350 challenger, as well as two nearly 1500 911. 
911s. The 911 is popular in multiplayer because it is the first B-Class car that most people get and is probably the highest ranked car that most people get for a little while. And then the next one up could possibly be the Vulcan, which can be achieved through daily car loot using the 911. Always play events as many times as possible to get as many rewards from them as you can, because many of them give extra rewards for repeat plays. Here, this 911 knocks me down, unfortunately putting me back into last place. But again, do not despair, there is still three quarters of the race to go, and Rome is one of those tracks where people just kind of tend to make mistakes on. As I said earlier, it is pretty much always best to go up ramps whenever you can, as you can see, that allowed me to catch up even closer to this challenger that is ahead of me. However, you must be aware not to go too high on ramps, or else it really can slow you down. So yeah, just go up the middle, or slightly above the middle of most of them, and that will probably be the best way you can do it. So around these curves, I catch up even closer to this guy. I tried to 360 him, but it didn't work because I was far away, but then I 360'd him again, and it did work. Sometimes it takes multiple times to get it right. We have now moved up into third position with approximately one third of the track left. Let's see if we can move up into at least second position. I have since found out that it is actually best to flat spin to the left of that big building back there because then you do not hit that car, which you pretty much always do if you go to the right. Unless of course you are driving a car that has really good drifting, which not many of the lower DNC class cars do. Cars generally start to drive better when you get into higher classes. So we have moved up into second position. We have a little bit of a problem there near the end, but thankfully the finish line is close enough that we do manage to finish second. Behind one 911, but ahead of another 911 and Phoenix Ron in his Challenger. All right, so for this final race, we have a battle with Dr. Hillusion in his 1330 SRT8, so just a little bit higher, as well as a 1629 911 and a very low Camaro. This race is slightly lower FPS than my other ones. That's because I was trying out some different settings on my recording device. I wanted to try recording at 1080p, and that's what this was actually recorded in. As you can see, it didn't quite go so well, because for some reason, I tried recording this at 1080p 60fps, but instead I got high quality but like 15fps. And then when I went back down to 720 at 30fps, which is what I usually do, it's better. That's what the rest of the races in this video are at. So unfortunately, I will probably not be making any 1080p 60fps videos of this game, even though I would definitely like to. It's just my computer can't handle it, I guess. So guys, in conclusion of this video, the SRT8 is by far the best car that you can get as a beginner to use in multiplayer. Go for this car as early as you can, start it up as much as you can, and you can get to Platinum and even Legend League with it, without any of the super expensive higher cars. Because this is a car that is given out in career and in the daily car loot. Like, come on. I would also like to say that I will, of course, not be stopping making Asphalt 8 videos either. I will probably try to do maybe an even amount of Asphalt 9 and Asphalt 8 videos because I know people want to see both of them and some people only want to see one or the other. So I will try to please everyone in this case. And I do not mind doing that either because I like Asphalt 9 equally with Asphalt 8. Yes, I'm one of those few people that doesn't really prefer one over the other. They're both very good games with each one having its own advantages and disadvantages. So we did beat Dr. Hallusion in this race in his Challenger, and we also beat that other 911, which was driven by Elite Predator. Thank you all so much for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed and would like to see me make more Asphalt 9 videos, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye!